Hello again. So I think it's been a few weeks since I checked on the garden. So I thought today we could take a walk around and look at all the plants here. So these two are my figs. They are rooted. I know they look like they're dead, but they're not. The, they just, the leaves are all dried and, you know, because it was so hot when I first planted them in here. But they are actually nicely rooted in there. So I'm really hoping that they survive and continue to grow. Uh, let's see, what do we got back here? Let's start back in the corner. So this pot, I love this big terracotta pot. I had these, this is the uh, Pilo Cesareus Azurius, the blue torch. And there was three of them. The one here clearly is dead. This one, it still has blue on it, but I need to pull those both out because they just look horrible. And the Porto Lucaria Afra is starting to grow. And you know what? It looks like I see a little tiny cactus right there. <laughs> I don't know if I put that there or if it, I don't know how that got in there. I might have stuck it in there, but it seems to be doing good. It's protected from the sun. I have some uh, Echeveria Blue Elf. I need to cut the rest of these blooms off because they're all done. A little aloe back there and a cute little pig. Isn't that adorable? It's kind of glass. It's sort of like a, I don't know if it's a ceramic. It's pretty fragile, so I'm always really careful. I don't want to break it because it's cute. So these are the two cuttings. I chopped the tops off of these two plants that I bought. I think I paid like, I don't know, 40 bucks for these two plants and they were twice as tall and they kept falling over. So I chopped the tops off of both of them. These are well rooted. You can see, you know, the growth from here up is new and from here up is all, that was all this year's growth. So they're, they're happy there. And this pot is doing really good. This is the one I brought out from the um, greenhouse and it did still have a lot of mealy bugs in it, but I've been treating it and it seems like they're doing better. This plant here did not make it. It just got too hot back here, I think. But the Porta Lucaria Afra Variegata is what this one is, is just doing great. It does still have some mealy bugs on it, but I've been treating it like, I don't know, every couple days, every time I see more and it does look a lot better. I don't know what I'm doing with this thing. <laughs> I need to uh, probably just find somebody that wants a few little, those, these ones on this side are the Eve's needles and these are some sort of a little choya. I'm not sure, but I want to, this is a terracotta pot. It's a bowl and I want to reuse it for something cool. So I need to get those out of there. This pot is one I did not too long ago and the plants were all doing okay. The Sempervisum, you know, I haven't been watering it. Um, they're really dry, but my dogs keep pulling these. This was all full of Sempervivums and the dogs keep pulling them out and eating them. And I don't know why, but every time I catch them, I get after them, but they just keep doing it. But I got a few little things on the back side that look good. And of course the Euphorbia, this Euphorbia Trigona is just doing great. That's the cheap one that I got at Lowe's and I got like four big plants out of it and they're all just thriving. So I need to do something with that. And then here, you know, I was pretty excited that I found a, this um, Stapelia plant here, how it suddenly crested. I mean, it's growing like crazy. I did find way down in there some mealybugs, but I've treated it and it looks like, looks like it's good. It's getting some new arms here, but <laughs> it likes this spot. I have struggled with these plants because they just... They want sun, but you give them sun and then they fry and then you take them out of the sun and they don't do well. So a little one there that's finally starting to take off. So yeah, I'm pretty happy about that one. Uh, it's morning, it's pretty early out here. Is it even seven yet? Um, ah, it actually is eight o'clock. It just, I guess the days are just getting shorter and shorter. Um, so I'm a little congested. I'm always congested in the morning when I wake up. And I actually got up at six today. So um, this is uh, Agave Desmediana. It's doing good. Got this one not too long ago. This bowl is amazing. I planted this, I don't know, probably two years ago and it's doing really great. And it looks like 
I just treated it because I did find some mealy bugs. And uh, so I think I'll treat this middle plant again. This is an Agavoides. All of these in this corner are the Agavoides. And they're tough. But, uh, yeah, I got some issues here. We'll deal with those. But I did treat a bunch of this stuff down in here. So it looks looking really good. But I love this. <laughs> I just leave it. I put those plants in there because I had no place else to put them. And I wasn't planning on leaving them in there. This bowl is huge and heavy. But I kind of like how it looks. And then I just started a little Sempervivum colony right around here. A few of them didn't make it. Got pretty hot over here. But these ones, wow, they have just settled right in. And then here is my agave uh, Dor Dorothea. What is it? Dor yeah, Dorothea. Dorothea. Dorothea, whatever. Um, it looks really good. It started turning orange. Um, and it was really kind of looked like it was having some trouble because it got so hot when I first put it out here and I had shade screen over it but it's looking really good now it's still got a little bit of orange I love it when they turn orange but I think it was uh it was having some it was having some issues back here I have <laughs> it looks like a crop of clover growing so this is the one plant that I really chopped to pieces because it looked horrible it was growing through the pot into the ground had a lot of dead stuff on it and I believe what this is, is the Callisto cactus. I think this is a Straussii. Um, I've had it for many years and you can see all the new growth and it's in the corner that stays pretty shady most of the time. And then here in this little pot are some more pieces I chopped off. They're growing. Let's see, my uh, Gasteria kind of likes this corner. It's just got so much new growth down in there. And then, I got a dead leaf here. Let's get that out of the way. And look at all that. Looks really good. Um, these were some Moonstone and um, Superbum that I stuck in here that looks like these Superbums are really stretching for the sun. Cause they, they, they get kind of shady, but had lots of little pups down in there that were, you know, just one little, little leaf was growing. And so I left them in here. I just never had a place to put them, but doing okay not great but they're doing okay so i've got some euphorbias up here my medusa I, I always see it called a medusa cactus and it's not a cactus it's a euphorbia but it bloomed again you can see the flowers are pretty much all spent tiny pretty little yellow flowers but it seems happy because look at that that center it looks really good and then i've had all of these little guys have been blooming like crazy. I mean, just over and over, all these spent blooms. You know, I try to get pictures of them as they bloom. Um, okay, this is interesting. <laughs> I just noticed this. So here's a flower. That must have come off the inside of this. I don't, I don't want to say the inside. Look at there's new blooms up on top too. They're going to, more buds. This must be um, coming off that cactus way low under the gravel but it's about to open. It'll probably be open today. I'll come out later and check on it. That is so funny. I've never seen them do that. Uh, I just looked at it and I thought, hmm, what's coming up out of the, the gravel? There's something planted. No, it's just a bloom off this cactus. So this little euphorbia back here is doing really good. Um, I like how leafy it is. It seems to, I don't know, I, I, I'm just not sure about watering this. It, it always seems like it's crinkled, but I think that's just the way it looks. Um, back in there, I threw some baby cactus seedlings that I had rescued, but I don't think they're surviving. But those little aloe pieces are doing good. And then here, I think I took these off of my Agave Regine. Ferdinand, King Ferdinand. I think those were pups off the King Ferdinand and they're doing really good. I bought a King Ferdinand, but it was basically all, it was mostly a bunch of pups together in one pot that were starting to grow out. And so I just went ahead and grabbed it and, you know, figured we'll see what it does. I'm um, getting another bud right there, another flower bud. And this one has quite a few little pups on it. Looking good. This little guy, I chopped it up and repotted it. I will bring this one in for the winter because it struggled last year and it's still not really doing much. Um, these guys, look, this thing has had so many flowers. 
So that's kind of over here, all that's really interesting. Sorry if I make you dizzy. Um, this is my Euphorbia. This is a variegated Amic. And uh, it's starting to get some more leaves on the top. It lost a lot of its leaves. It had really long leaves, but then it put on this huge growth spurt. And look at how big these arms are getting. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with that, but I'm not gonna be able to leave it there. And it's not hardy, it's not frost hardy. I was thinking, because I bought it in the fall last year and I kept it in the house over the winter. So I was thinking to just, you know, bring it back in. But that pot by itself probably weighs 40 pounds and then full of dirt. And now how big that cactus is or that, well, it's not a cactus, it's a euphorbia. I don't think I'm gonna be able to move it. I think I'm just gonna try and get some frost cloth over it this year and hope for the best. Hopefully we won't have as cold of a winter as we did last year. We had so many days down right around 30, which is not normal for us. You know, we get cold, but usually just a few days. And then typically it just stays in the mid to upper 30s. But we had so many days well below freezing. It does warm back up pretty quickly in the morning, but I did lose a few plants last year. Look at this Eve's needle. This thing is fat. Whew. Here's my desert rose. I think it's a denium. It always looks like the leaves are thirsty, but I did water everything yesterday, so I know it's getting water. Um, what is this one? Uh, this is, uh, I remember buying it. What are you? Is it, I think it's a cotyledon. I can't think of the name of this one. It comes in a red and a pink. It doesn't get a whole lot of sun, so it's pretty green here, but it's doing good. Um, this Parodia, it looks like a couple more blooms are about to open. Yay, this thing bloomed a lot this year. It was in a pot for many years. And then when I did this garden area last year, I planted a lot of my old cactus up right in the ground and they're really starting to thrive, so I'm happy. Um, my little copper spoons in the whale. Doesn't that just look like a whale with a little water spout coming out? I love it. I got this pot down at Planter's Paradise and it's like so, I don't know how to describe it. It's like rough. It's like they painted it and then peeled the paint off part of it. It's a heavy pot, but it's one of my favorite ones. And I'll probably have to pull this copper spoons out and plant another smaller one in there because I, I like that look. I think it's so cute like that. But the copper spoons, that'll get huge. And uh, this had some mealy bugs in it too down here. I sprayed it good yesterday, so I'll have to keep an eye on that. My little dickia here. Got some sunburn on there, but we've got two more days in the low 90s, 91, 92, right in there. And then it's gonna go down into the low 80s and then back to the mid 80s for the next two weeks. So I don't think we're gonna have too much more heat. I mean, hot heat. So I'm kind of happy about that. So these little guys are putting off a bunch of pups down in here, I see. Um, these get really pretty purple flower, or no, pink flower, a pink flower. A little yellow flower starting to bloom. This just bloomed again, and it looks like it's got another bud coming in, another parodia. I always thought that was a mammalaria. Here, hold on, I gotta throw, I got a handful of dead leaves, toss those. Um, and then I Google lensed it, and it actually is a parodia. Um, and it was the Lenning, Lenning, oh God, what, what was it? I typed it out a couple times, I should remember, but of course I don't. Um, but I like that cactus, I've had it a long, long time. Everybody down in here, look how pretty this, I think that's an Echeveria, but look at the pink on the edge. It never shows up on camera the way it actually does, but I like it, because it's right next to this purple Opuntia. And it kinda, they just sort of mimic each other, I guess. And then, my little Haworthias down here doing really good. So I planted this and some sort of a little flowering kind of ground covery thing. I forget what it was, but that didn't make it because it didn't get enough water because I don't water very often. But those were looking good. Uh, my Cameronii, my Aloe Cameronii is really green. I should pull it up, chop the roots off so it goes red again, but I think it's coming to the end of its growing season. I think it's going to be going, going dormant, but it's got a lot of new growth. Look at this little pup down in here. I did chop this piece off because it was growing out sideways and I repotted it. 
and uh, so it's it's doing good. The little sedums I put in here, and I planted actually some more over here. I can see these ones have finally rooted because now they've got a lot of new growth, so they'll fill this in and hopefully hang over that rock. This kind of looks like uh, these were struggling because <laughs> you know, like this one here, looks like it's almost dead, but it does still have some green. Well, and this one came back. And I think it's cool. It looks like it's variegated. It's not supposed to be. Um, this is uh, Echinopsis. These were pups I stuck in there. I have those everywhere because that plant uh, pups like crazy. Um, my, oh, let's give this a little more room. My perii here is doing really good. Now it's got the one big pup it came with. It's got another little one right in there. Let me get down in there. Can you see that little one next to it? But it's... Uh, it's happy, happy. And then over here, you like my skeleton pig for Halloween? I think I got that at Tractor Supply. Okay, let's do this without falling over and stepping on anything. So these mammalarias are all splitting. It's so strange that they do this. It started out as two. I've had this cactus for many, many years. Had it in a pot, and then it was four. And now it's going to be two, four, six. Looks like that one's going to split two. How funny is that? Um, I got a smaller one over here. And look at my tiger jaw. I planted one or two little tiny pieces. Actually, I think I planted this part here and then this is all, it has just spread and that's all new growth. I love my tiger jaws. I do have some tiger jaw seedlings growing in the house. They're doing good. Everything out here is kind of, eh, you know, meh. Some of it's, surviving some of it's not now underneath in there <laughs> look at all those little plants hiding under the portal lucaria they're looking good because they're getting lots of shade uh, some of these big ones are finally starting to to look a little better because we we've lost a lot of the heat that little paddle plant of whatever that is is really taking off these are still kind of dormant the saonium but it's going to start opening up and all the Semper Vivums under there. Some of them are kind of fried because I haven't been covering them with the shade cloth. Uh, look at this Sahara. I love this. This is my favorite Echeveria. It's got lots of pups. It's, uh, um, look at that sedum. Look at all that sedum. I stuck some more in there and that stuff's taken off. But that Echeveria Sahara, I have quite a few of them now. Bear with me here. I'm trying to get back out without tripping over something. Um, the Saharas are, you know, I want to have so many of those pups that I can just plant those everywhere. And you're not supposed to propagate them because they are, is it copyrighted? Trademarked? Whatever. Um, so, you know, they're really hard to find up here. And mine are really taken off, so I'm happy about that. I bought a few... I think I bought two at Poots Nursery, and the rest of them I bought all down at, I believe I got them at Waterwise Botanicals. Look at all these ghost plants in here. These things are just so happy. They're loving this cooler weather. This little guy is struggling in the pig there. I did repot. Up I go. Don't fall. I'm balancing on a rock. <laughs> I did pull everything out of here and repot this stuff. Um because it just looked horrible. I don't know what that cactus is doing. It's yellow, so I don't know if it's going to make it, but it can if it wants to. Check out the blooms coming out. This is going to open probably in the next few days. I think it's going to be white, and it looks like it's going to be a big flower. So I'm pretty excited for this cutting. Everything up here, eh, nothing special. I did turn my totem cactus. You see my totem cactus here because it was starting to grow really crooked towards the sun. And I didn't want to turn it because last winter we got so much rain and it didn't occur to me to come out and cover it. And the water wasn't draining. I think the pot was sitting too tight on the shelf and it just split. <laughs> Look at that. I was so mad. So I turned it around the other way so you couldn't see it, but I've turned it back because I want it to grow more straight. And then these guys up here, let me rearrange my feet. Ooh. Okay, these guys, I don't know how long I'm going to be able to leave these in here because this one is, well, it's not poking yet, 
but it's this big guy is starting to lean that way and it looks like he's getting a little yellow i think i mean might need to fertilize this um this thing has grown so much and then these two have doubled in size since last year they were like this tall last year and all this new fat on the top that's all new growth my euphorbia lactea ghost i will be bringing back in the house probably in the next month as it starts cooling down at night and that one eh, it's got a little new growth on it about an inch and a half of growth at the top this little choy is doing good little mammalaria there i got that little cutting of i pulled the plants out of that pig planter i had that over in the garden and i pulled them out and i repotted no you know what that's not that one this one's been like that for a while i've had that gasteria in that one the other pig planter i'll show you in a minute but all these little guys they're all doing good anybody got any new flower buds i don't see anything these two these are also the pilos Aserius azureus but they're you know obviously much smaller down here these two i got some weeds i need to get this clover pulled out um i think that's a feral cactus and there's another pup coming down in the bottom of this one i love these I had them way tucked back under there for a while because I didn't want them to sunburn. But now they're out so they can get some sun. This little front clump is doing really good. Uh, my dickias look great. These are my little baby barrels. They're doing good. I did lose two of these last year. The small ones, I had to replace them. They, they got rot. Or did I lose three of them? Two or three, I can't remember. Hopefully we won't get so much rain this year. Um, this is a agave filifera and it's doing really good it's got a lot of new growth right there in the middle and check out my aloe starry night this thing has taken off look how big that's getting i don't know how long that's going to be able to stay there got some agavoides here and these two are echeveria neon breakers and they have just always struggled i don't know i should have cut these flower blooms off right away but i didn't so and then here's another Aeonium. This one never really went dormant, I think, because it's a lot cooler over here. Another little... Oh, this is looking good. Look at this new little little growth coming out of the side here. It's got a nice little pup. Um, this one is one I also had to pull out. I will probably bring it in the house. It's not going to be frost hardy. And I don't want to start all over again. My little hippo planter is <laughs> cute. And the old man of the Andes cactus, I think. So I've got all this. Um, this is this is not the ruby slippers. It's the other one that's real similar. It has longer leaves, but it's that fuzzy velvety. Gets really red in the sun. I can't think of the name of it. Doing good. Um, this portalacaria, which really struggled when I first put it in there. I kept adding new little cuttings to it to you know fatten it up. It's finally taken off, and I'll probably have to start trimming it back. It's going to grow out over the sidewalk. Um, look at this thing. These are so cool. This is a, um, whoops, get my hand out of the way. It's a, I can't think of the name of it. It's not Therocactus. It's a, uh, I'll, I'll post it when I think of it. <laughs> and here, I think this is a cotyledon. Or is that, you know, this might be a um, Kalanchoe. That's a cotyledon mint truffles. I think that might be, I forget which one that is. Get out of there, dogs. Go on. This beautiful, oop, I just got buzzed by a hummingbird. Um, that milii, Euphorbia milii. Oh, it does have a, look at, it actually got a, right down in there, it got a nice little red bloom. So this thing died off pretty much, I thought it was not going to come back last winter. It just got way too cold, and it it's taken all year to really look that good again. I will throw some frost cloth over it this year, but it took so long just to leaf out that it didn't really get any flowers on it, but I see it's finally got one. Here's some more cuttings from the Straussy eye. So... We had, you know, so much rain that a couple of them, that one rotted, and that one kind of rotted, but then it sent off a new shoot at the top. And then this one main one still looks really good. All these, 
have really taken off down in here. These were from my friend that she gave them to me. They were all infested with mealy, bu mealy bugs and half, <coughs> excuse me, half dead. And uh, they're doing really good now. I think I stuck, yeah, I stuck a couple more right down in there. I'm getting tangled on these blooms. Look how far that sticks out across the walkway. I mean, it's like halfway across the walkway. So it's probably time to cut these blooms off. You know, it might be better for the plant, but I just love the Echeveria Saharas. So these ones were quite a bit bigger when I put them in, but they did lose a lot of leaves last year. This, the red on here, I just, I just never get over the color on this, whatever that is. It's a Adolphia, is it? Uh, my ruby slippers, or ruby necklace, Athona capensis. This one, this one's really, this one gets more shade. It get the shade hits this one first. But look how far down it's grown. This thing is huge. I bought two of these last year in October at Waterwise Botanicals and they were in like the one gallon pot and they have just really taken off. So this, this side still looks pretty good. The blue elf looks good. Now this blue elf, I think is funny, has sent up a new bloom this late in the year. I don't know why it's growing like a snake. Every time I look at it, it's pointing a different direction, but the hummingbirds really love these. Um, I did cut the blooms off of this Sahara because this one has pups under it and I really wanted to give it a little bit better chance for those. You know, I, I didn't want it feeding that flower stalk, but look at the red. Oh my gosh, I just love this plant. And then the cotyledon mint truffles. These, these ones are really leggy on this side, so I've been meaning to pull this pot apart, but I don't know. I think I might just chop these tops off of these and reset them, and maybe even just leave the stem in there. You can see how the new growth pops up, you know, right out of the ground. And then I have this little aloe distans in there, and it's got a little pup right down in there. Um, I don't even know what all I stuck in the ends of edges of these. This one over here has a couple little things down in here <laughs> that are that are happy. They're back in the shade. I don't know. I just am not ready to pull these apart yet because everything's so happy in there. Now well, we'll see. So my fountain over here that I planted my cactus in. Let me try to zoom in here. Yeah, those are looking really good. If I zoom in and then I talk, it sounds like I'm talking from 10 feet away. That's why I stop talking every time I zoom in. So these, I am pretty excited because I have been waiting all summer. I don't understand why I have this cactus here. I have some pieces of it on the other side that bloomed months ago. And these ones have had buds on them for so long and they're finally starting to do something. You can see they're going to be a really pretty kind of a light purple, pinkish purple. But there are a ton of flowers. This thing is going to be amazing when these open up, probably just in the next couple days. My another Pilo Caesarius azureus, I had to chop it off because it rotted last year, the top from the cold. Let me come around this way. And you can see these nice new little little pups coming up the top. So that's going to that's gonna, uh, get protected this year because I don't want to... I'll probably just lay, you know, maybe a big plastic cup over the top just to keep the frost off of it. And hopefully I don't have any more damage to it. So it's gonna look cool when both of those pups grow up. Got a little Gymno Coliseum in there, my little hedgehog cactus. Uh, this is a blue barrel that I bought. I gotta figure out a place to put it. That pot is doing good, but it needs to be pulled apart and redone. And Let's look over here real quick first, because then I can move a plant back. So my Japanese maple is losing a lot of leaves, and I don't know, do they lose their leaves in the winter? I didn't think they did. But I noticed down in here, a lot of leaves dropping. It gets in the shade really early. By about 10 o'clock, this is in the shade. So, But we have had a lot of heat, and I can see the tips of the leaves are burned. But I don't know, I'll just have to... I don't know. It might, it might be time to fertilize again. Uh, this was a plant that was given to me to nurse back to health, and it's looking really good. 
and same with these. And I think, I think it was the same one. I think she gave me both of those plants. This little thing, and I forget what it's called. They call them pencil plant. Was just these straggly little pieces. I pot them all up. They pretty much get mostly shade. And it has taken off. And then these two Echeveria cuttings. I think it was just called painted Echeveria. Um, they had these big flower stalks. They're rooted in here. I'm going to have to move them. And then these things, whatever this was, she gave me a cutting of this or two cuttings. They were pretty sad looking. It's taken off. It's just laying down on the ground. It's growing like crazy. It is happy, happy, happy. So up here, oh, here's another one of the Euphorbia trigonas. I stuck it in a pot by itself just because I didn't know what I was going to do with it. This funny little plant. Love and life. It had a ton of blooms. Uh, here's one thing I'm kind of happy about is these two, they're called Strawberry Flame. They are a type of bromeliad. Um, they're in a group, they call them Earth Star, but they were pretty much dead. I moved them back into the shade and I try to remember to water it every day because it, like a bromeliad, they like a lot of water. And now it's coming back red again where it was like, you couldn't even see it in here. It was so small and the leaves were like tan colored, but now they're getting their color. So I think I'm, you know, I bought one and almost killed it. So I bought another one and almost killed it. So I have two of them. So hopefully they're going to survive. Now I'm going <laughs> to, if I sound like I'm out of breath, it's because the camera's right next to my face. So you can hear me breathe, which I'm sure is annoying. So I apologize for that. Um, these are my Tradescantia. Um, it's pretty hot over here for them, but this one's starting to really take off. I forget to water them. You know, I should water them every day, but I don't. My monkey tail cactus is looking good. It gets a lot of shade over here. Up on, move that. Whew. Okay, up on this table, I have my, I love this Echeveria. I think it's rainbow. I think it's just rainbow. But look how pretty the color on that one is. And it was starting to struggle for a while. But it looks like it's getting some new growth and it's getting its pink back. And then I just have, I don't remember the names of all these. I'd have to look. They have tags somewhere. But this little, I guess it's a euphorbia because I see it's getting some leaves on it. I almost killed it. It was too hot for it. And now it's doing really good. So these are just little random plants I have stuck up in here. This one has really taken off. It's huge. Got some Ruber Tinctum. I might pull these out and stick these in my gutters. Little Euphorbia. This was a Gymnocalisium. I don't think it's going to make it. It might already be dead. Probably is. Uh, these are some more cuttings. I'll probably chop these up and stick them in the gutters also. Um, look how pretty that one is. Try to get out of the shade. It's starting to really color up. Uh, that one's probably not going to make it. That one's probably not going to make it. But some of the plants that are in here, it looks like a bird might have pooped on that one. Um, some of the plants, you know, I just stick them over here. They're not anything special. And, uh, you know, if they're really pretty, I like to, I like to put them in a cute pot. This pot is just absolutely amazing me. So this stuff, I don't remember what it is, but I had one little piece of it. It had like three leaves and a flower on it and I stuck it in there and it is just kind of taken over. Uh, I got some tomentosa down in here. Looks like a kiwi. Um, I don't know what these little, maybe Echeveria's down in here. Some Vera Higgins. I do have this, if I remember, was called, this was this the Navajo Princess? Mangavi, I think. Was that what, or did I get a different one? I, I think that's what it was. I got a Semper Vibum down there. It looks like some little cotyledon mint truffles, some more Ruber Tinctum jelly beans. Um, the Euphorbia Trigona, love and life. Oh, got a little sedum down in there. I got another little Trigona on this side. I don't remember what this is, but these were like, you know, three inches tall, four inches tall. I stuck them in there and look at that. And then in the back is the Petalanthus Macrocarpus. That thing, when I first planted this pot up, it was tucked under that table. And now look at how much higher it is than the table. I had to pull it out twice and I still got some pieces trying to grow back up under there. But love and life, that's a happy plant there. 
This one is doing really good. This is a, <laughs> I gotta be careful when I back up and bend over. A uh, little Euphorbia, I believe that's Snowflake. Snowball, Snowflake. Snowflake. Um, looks good right here. And this, I think, I don't, she didn't have this one labeled, but it's an agave. I think it's in the Podotorum family. You know, those little small clumping agaves. And then this, she gave me, um, they just call it Euphorbia Zigzag. She gave me a cutting of this. And you can see, that's all new growth. This little nub at the top. So it's doing good in there. These are my little aloe hybrids. This one's got a bloom on it. And one of my watchers told me to move these into more shade that they don't like the full sun. And he was right, they're doing much better. They're starting to thrive and they all have a lot of new growth. And then this little variegated, I don't remember what it was. <laughs> I keep it in the shade so it doesn't lose its variegation. And now if we back up, you can see I have that they call um, the San Pedro cactus. It's, uh, what's the name of it? I'll post the name of it on here. I bought it because it was really cool. I haven't decided what I'm gonna do with it. And then I've got this great big one right here. You can kind of see it's sort of a bluish. It had two spent buds on it. And I'm gonna, that one of them fell off and disappeared, but this one looks like it might develop um, some seeds. So I'm gonna watch that. And uh, yeah, otherwise it's, it looks like it's doing good. It doesn't look like it was treated very well. You know, it's got a lot of damage to it, but it's healthy and it's got new growth on top. So, so I wanted it. And my little Mexican fence post is doing good down in there. Right there. And there, oh, and that's that aloe Cameroni eye cutting that I've gotten. It's got new growth down in the middle. So it's probably rooted down in there. I should just sell it or give it to someone. Uh, this one, another one wasn't labeled that I got. And I uh, don't know what I'm going to do with it yet, but it's super cool. I definitely need to repot it because it's just like leaning on the back side of that pot. <laughs> this little pot is doing good. So this one, I love this one. And I have the two Pringlei, which are clearly completely different cactus. But they were both in the same pot labeled as the Pringlei. So I'm like, okay. But the aloe distans is happy. It's got a couple little pups there. I think it's got one on the other side. I can't see. No, maybe it's only got one pup, but it's doing good. And then these are the Echeveria, they call them Mexican snowball, um, Echeveria elegans. And they are just going crazy. All the stuff in here looks really good. I never did put a top dressing in here. I guess I should do that. So my coin plant hasn't really done anything, but it still looks healthy. I did find a broken leaf. I stuck it down in there in the soil. It was laying down on the brick. So I don't know if a cat knocked it off or if a bird landed on it, I'm not sure. This pot, holy cow. This thing is going crazy. I can see my sunburst is starting to get a lot of new growth down there in the middle the Aeonium Sunburst, but check out the Fred Ives. Are those beautiful or what? Just crazy. You know what, I didn't really show you much back in on the other side. But down in there, I've got another Aloe Distans and look at the Sansevieria pups that are coming up. I don't know what's down under there. There's looks like a couple little plants. There's some stuff down in here, but this Aeonium, it's got a pup down in there. And if you come around the other side, I have a little propeller plant. I think something's eating it. I might have a snail. Yeah, but you can see the Sansevieria pups. I mean, this this one right here, that's all a new growth. And that one back there. So there's a lot. Oh, there's a little one in the front here. I'll probably pull a few of those out. Yeah, so <laughs> that pot is just happy, happy. Okay, these two little cactus are about to bloom again. These things bloom like crazy all year. And I got a little dog, Mr. Raider. Hi, baby, what are you doing? Hi, Raider. You getting some sun, buddy? Yeah, you're a good boy. You're a good boy. Yes, you are. Okay, uh, this little thing, I just threw all these little tiny pieces in here. Um, 
the sticks on fire is coming back. I thought it was dead. There is a little euphorbia in there. I'm not sure what it is, but it's dead. It didn't make it, but the cactus have bloomed like crazy. All of them did. And then I'll need to probably pull these echeverias and this thing's really stretching. You can see how lady that's gotten. My booby cactus, this one here was my newer one this year I bought. Can you see, there it is in my little pig planter. I'm trying to get my shadow out of the way. Sometimes the shadow makes you be able to see it better. Sometimes it just hides it. But this thing has a lot of new growth. It was a little rough looking, but it was cheap. Well, cheaper. That is a Pacopodium, and I forget the species, but this thing is doing great. And then these three cuttings, these are those three cuttings that I ordered um, for, I got for $9. So they're $3 a piece. And the, these two bigger ones rooted pretty quickly and this one didn't. I was worried it was gonna die. Well, now it's rooted. All three are well rooted. And you can see they got a little new growth at the top. So I'll probably leave them in here for a while. And then we'll see what happens next year. Hopefully they'll get a flower because they're amazing flowers, but it's doing really good. Um, Selena Sirius Grandiflorus, I believe is what the tag says. I haven't said the name in a while, so you know, you kind of forget. And then up here, this is my little, I don't know, this cactus, it's like a rickrack cactus. Ooh, it's growing right up through there. I don't know, it's just, I thought it would be a lot happier over here because it gets a lot more shade, but it gets morning sun, but you can see, I don't know, I just don't know. And then I've got this little sedum in here that's a lot smaller than it should be. It looks like it needs water, but it actually does get plenty of water um, because I water this every day. I've tried to kill this thing so many times, but look at all the new growth that just popped out. So, you know, I don't know if this is a plant that you just replace every year. It's a fuchsia, but it has the most beautiful, does it have any, oh, see, here's one. Okay, there's, it's got a couple of new blooms that are gonna wanna open. And they're, oh, here's one. Hey, whoa, come back here. Doesn't want to turn this way. So there's one in here. You can see it's purple and red. It's not really showing up on camera. Oh, there's another one. I'm surprised it's still getting blooms on it because it was really struggling because I'll forget to water it. If I don't water it every day, it wants to die. Uh, my Christmas cactus, this needs something, fertilizer or something. It always looks, it gets tons of new growth and it blooms, but I don't know, it just doesn't look great. This little fern, I've tried killing this so many times. I've had it a couple of years, um, but I really like it. It's super pretty and it's tough. I mean, it just keeps growing back, but now it's getting consistent water because I have to water this every day. So it reminds me to water that. Here's the backside of the Sansevieria and you can see all the, the new little pups coming up. I need to pull those out. It's just gonna take over that pot, which it probably will anyway. And that is a huge pot. It's like two and a half, three feet tall. That big black pot, it's really big and weighs a ton. Okay, over here, let's see what's over here. My penis cactus did not get a new growth this year. Last year, when I bought it, it was just these two pieces. And they, you know, they basically looked like that. And then that side piece came out last year. And then I brought it in over the winter. And then it hasn't really showed any growth this year. Um, this is my first booby cactus that... I left out the first year over the winter. We didn't have such a cold winter, not this last winter, but the year before. And then it was out in the sun and I think that's just sunburn, but it's, you know, it's got some new growth. Here's a little pup that I found somewhere. I can't remember what it was. Of course I didn't label it, <laughs> but hopefully it'll grow because I, I wouldn't have saved it unless it was from something cool, if you know what I mean. Um, here I got a, a fly that keeps landing on my kneecap. Um, I bought this, uh, what is it? Ripsalis paradoxa. Um, this Ripsalis, I, I love the flowers on these. And so I think I got this from, where did I get? You know what? I don't remember where I got it, but I haven't had it very long, but it's doing really good right here and I'm hoping to get some flowers off it. I tried to buy one online, but they were always sold out of them. And then I saw this one 
maybe at Lowe's or Home Depot. I don't remember, but I'm like, oh, I'm grabbing that. Um, this Stapelia is finally starting to look healthy. I got these cuttings from a woman at a garage sale and we started talking about plants and she took me in her backyard and had this huge, amazing plant. And these were just a few of the cuttings and they've been purple. You know, of course they turn purple as soon as you cut them off from the stress. And they're finally starting to go back green. I moved them out here. They used to be in my greenhouse. I think it was too hot. Down in here, I have this little Euphorbia obesa. I think that's a hybrid. That's a real one. That's a Forbia obe Euphorbia obesa. Um, this one I got, I think that one might be a hybrid too because it's not smooth. It's got more ridges than what this one does. The same with these. I don't know. Another little Euphorbia. Pretty. Variegated. Down here, this is my Aeonium. Uh, is this Rainbow Witch? What is this one? It's Euphorbia Pink Witch. And it was really dark before, and it's lost a lot of its color. Um, but it's starting to starting to do better. And now it's coming into its growing season. There's a little aloe variegated. I want to protect that one. It needs a pot still. Another Euphorbia that's competing with the clover. <laughs> I guess I need to weed that. And I got a bunch of little cuttings in here. Look at my little rabbit. Isn't that cute? I just found that. Um, th this is the pig planter that I pulled the other plants. I pulled that propeller plant and a big, oh, uh, something else out of it. I don't remember. And I just put this other euphorbia in it. Got some pups, some some surviving pups. Um, these were all leaf pullings from these lovely rows that I bought last year. There's a bunch of them in here. And then a couple other, I forget what those are. Those were all, hey, get out of there. Those were all grown from leaf cuttings. And um, they're just kind of cute in here. I just have them in a little pot. That's a sticker on the pot. There we go. So you can see my cute sticker. Oop. A friend of mine gave me that. Um, all this stuff is just happy, happy. These little things, you can see all the sun damage to that one, but it grows. These are all pups off of it. This thing, I don't know what this is. This is, I believe, a Kalanchoe. Over here, we got a hot mess. We got a hot mess in there. I need to, this is a, a citronella plant and it has just taken over. So I don't know if I'm just gonna pull it out and start over or if I can trim it up. I need to go on YouTube and you know, type in how to care for citronella plants because there'll probably be a video on how to prune them or whatever. But it's time to pull everything out of here anyway and replant with some fresh plants because everything is just way past its season. Um, this Echeveria is really cool. Look at the flowers it's sending up. Very nice. And I have this little yucca. This is a Restrata. And it's a little baby one. It's gonna take a long time for it to really look like a plant. Agave Americana Variegata. I don't know why I bought that. It's gonna get absolutely massive. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. It wasn't expensive, but it was pretty. You know, and it'll stay in a pot for a couple of years, but it's gonna it's gonna get huge. I'm gonna have to definitely do something with that. Some more of this. Um, I think this was the sedum, another sedum. Was it a dolphii? I can't remember. Wow. Loud. Um, here is my rum runner. So I replaced the one I had last year with this one and I will protect it from the frost, but it's got lots of little pups on there. So it's, it's doing okay. doesn't look great. New growth always looks really good, but I don't know. It struggles. Here's another one of my Echeveria Saharas. Look how beautiful this thing's just, it just keeps sending up more blooms. Um, I need to cut these ones off. I think my gardeners chop the top off when they go by with the weed eater so that it's not growing out into their way. But, I mean, look at all the blooms on this thing. It's definitely time to to snip those older ones off. And then I'll just, maybe I'll just leave these new ones on here. Is that just the most beautiful plant? And it's got pups. It's got a lot of pups under here. This one did. Pull these dead leaves out of here. I love that plant. They're <laughs> so beautiful. The blue. And like I said, it never shows up on camera how it actually looks, but they're beautiful. And then this sea dragon, I need to cut the bloom off of this. It's pretty much done. This uh, Echeveria, is it Echeveria sea dragon? I don't think it's Echeveria. I think it's, 
uh, something. It's a hybrid of some sort. Um, it's This one's in the pot. This one I've had for, I bought this one last year. And why don't you see the one in the ground, the difference? Um, I little another little dickia there. I just put that there because that's where I had a beautiful bromeliad that I killed, of course, immediately last year. It did not make it through the winter, so I just stuck that there. But I need a bigger plant in there to fill that space. That was the last Euphorbia trigona. You know, I had that one piece. And look at this thing. Let me try to zoom. Zoom. Happy, happy, happy. So here's the little poppy I made a short yesterday. I was pretty sure these were poppies that were popping up everywhere. Maybe that's why they call them poppies because they pop up everywhere. And I left them because I thought, you know what? I don't think that's a weed because I planted California poppies in there earlier this year. And I think they just <laughs> reseed themselves. So like I said yesterday, if you want to plant something and it's just going to keep spreading out on its own and they're so pretty when they bloom. So poppies. I still have not done anything with my topsy-turvy planter, but I will. <laughs> it's looking, it's looking really rough, especially over in here. Look at all this stuff. Cause this, this side gets the most of that direct hot summer sun, but that's okay. I'll get to it. I'll get to it. Okay. Over here, this is my aloe ghost. Yeah, this is a, yeah, this was an aloe ghost. I have a coral aloe. That was the other one I got. It's out by the greenhouse, though. Um, all these superbums, you know, I moved them over here because they were getting, the water kept hitting them. And uh, they were starting to really struggle and lose a lot of leaves and stuff, but I really want those to take off. And here's the bottom of those cactus that I said I bought two. They were in a pot, two of them for 40 bucks in a pot, and I chopped the tops off both of them. I planted the bottom, and they both have two new you know, two new arms off, coming off them. Pardon my shadows in the way. My my uh, more little rainbow hedgehog cactus. Can I get out of the the light so you can see? They're beautiful. And these are all little stacking crassulas. I just threw them all together in a pot, and they're all starting to bloom. My cactus cutting from New Mexico. Don't know what it is, but it's really taken off. It's got a whole new big pad and it had like three flowers on it. So on here, we got little Echeverias or Agavoides. What are these in here? I don't remember. Got a Tomentosa and a little bit of a Thonicopensis in this cup. These do all have drain holes in them. This little funny kind of a thimble cactus sort of thing in the pig. Now the only one that doesn't have a drain is this one in this, that's this plastic cereal bowl, but it's taken off in there. I just threw some cuttings. Those were filifera cuttings, agave filifera, and then a little piece of the um, Portolacaria afro variegata. And then this cool little, what is this? Uh, spiral steno serious, I believe. It's hard to read the tag. It's kind of got a little purple. It's a little stressed over here. And then I did get another little totem cactus. My big Pringly eye is doing really good. Growing, growing. Well, watch out dog. Uh, this pot still needs to be redone, but everything's, the plants in there look good. They're just scraggly and small. This is where I planted the lovely rose, my original ones. And I didn't think they'd make them through the winter last year, but they did, but I pulled all those leaves off of them and I got like six, seven more little plants growing. The stapelia in here is starting to take off. Uh, this is the Euphorbia Tiracali. Sticks on fire and it was pretty much dead over the winter and it, I mean, it's back to looking good. Oh, that's a weed. <laughs> you don't even notice those big weeds. Um, the copper spoons pretty much died off. It's coming back. I chopped the head off of this ghosty and it sent up another little plant. Here's some more Mexican snowball. I got a little aloe in there, um, another Mexican snowball, so I need to redo that pot. A little Opuntia cutting that I got. Look at that new baby pad. How cute is that? Um, and then I just redid my pig planter, so it looks good again. And another 
Echeveria Sahara with giant flower blooms that I need to chop. This thing had a Euphorbia milii. Look at the flower creeping around the corner. That's from the Sahara. Comes all the way back. <laughs> um, the milii died, but it had some little bits of sedum that had dropped out of my succulent gutters because that's where this pot used to be. And it's just taken off. And actually some fell down on the ground and is growing in the ground too. Um, this is a yucca, no, Hesper aloe. This was my Hesper aloe. I got this one not too long ago. I need to put a top dressing on it, make it look nicer. It's doing good. Back in here, so this was, ooh, um, that was a, was it Kalanchoe Lucie? that pretty much died off last year and I was going to rip it out and then I noticed it had some new growth and now I mean it just taken off so I will throw some frost cloth over this this year it's got lots of new growth right down in there too um because I want to protect it and see if that helps um just some random little stuff back there aeonium some little aeonium kiwis in the little pink pig um and this is the other cactus that I cut so now I've got four big cactus for basically the price of one here is my Kisho Khan, and this thing is super hardy. It did great as cold as it was. It didn't show any damage, and the heat we've had from the sun, no damage. I think that's a pretty tough plant. I did buy another one. It's in a pot by the greenhouse, and I might eventually bring it out here and plant it somewhere over in the roses. I'm gonna pull a couple of those middle ones out and do another little area over there. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna do it this year. I might do it in the spring. This, another Aloe Cameronia has like, I mean, almost tripled in size, but it's straight green. It's lost all of its red. I did not chop the roots off, but you can see the tips were red and that's the color I like, but I don't know. I'm gonna have to take a couple pieces. I don't think I wanna pull it all out. I might just chop some of the heads off and replant them around it so those parts will turn red. And just, cause I do kind of want it to fill in this space. I like it. Um, it will get massive if you don't keep it under control. So we'll see. Um, I have another Petalanthus macrocarpus. So this one struggled and it didn't do anything. And then finally this year, not too long ago, I noticed it was getting some, you know, leaves on it here and there, but now it's kind of going bleh, not real happy. That is Agave bracteosa. I don't know if it's gonna survive. I think it might have rotted. I protected it mostly from the sun, but maybe it got too much, I don't know. I think it's I think it's on its way out, sadly. But luckily it wasn't really expensive, But so I can replace it. Here's another Echeveria Sahara. And I mean, just the flowers on these things are amazing. If you want Echeverias that are gonna bloom like crazy, uh, get the Sahara. <laughs> They're not easy to get, and I don't know if you can order them. You might, you know, but if you're ever down in Southern California, go to Waterwise Botanicals and grab a couple because they're going to be worth it. So all these plants that I put next to it, this one has taken over, and it's sending up another plant stock along with a lot of blooms. But there was four or five little plants around this big Sahara, and they're just buried under there. <laughs> so I don't know if I'm going to fix that or just leave it. Um, I still haven't done anything with this. This is a portalacaria. I think this was minima. But there is <laughs> a poor little aloe distans under there. And a couple of probably echeverias of some sort or hybrids. But it's kind of shading those. So I sort of left them. But this, look at this thing. And it's just so nice and healthy. I need to chop it up a little bit though. So here's my other sea dragon. I think these are Echeveria actually. Um, I need to, some of these dead leaves out of there. Ooh, got spiders in there. Well, spider webs anyway, so I assume spiders. I don't know if you can see that in there. Look at all these dead leaves under here. So when this does start to get a bit of a trunk, you can cut it off and reset it. I won't, I'll leave it. I do need to cut these blooms off because you can see they're just dead and dry but it's sending up a new one. So, but look at the difference in this one from the one that was in the pot. It's literally half the size of this one. So, dog, 
I don't know which one you are, but stop barking at my goat. So we'll come around this side, check out the blue elf. Look at how beautiful that is. I really struggled to plant those because they just kept falling over and I was trying to prop them up. And I mean, they're, they're in there now. They are well rooted in there. They bloomed like crazy. Next year, this little stand of blue elf is going to be amazing. It's going to bloom. Um, on the <laughs> look at this. on the other side of this portalacaria, look at this little milii in here with the yellow flowers. It is just, it's loving life because it gets a little bit of shade. There's probably more plants down under here that I can't see. But this little milii, look how big that is under there. <laughs> so I'll leave it. You almost can't see my pig anymore. And then these aeoniums, these are the ones that never really went dormant. Now, the ones in the pots did because it was in this little pot. Those were kind of off to the side. But these get, there is this like, you can just feel cool air coming out of here. The, the air conditioner's not on. It's just cool under there. And these aeoniums didn't really even go dormant. I think it just, I think it's just that cool air. Um, these poor struggling aloe veras. I got to do something with this. I think what I should do is just chop them all pull everything out, put fresh soil in it, and just reset the nice, you know, big centerpieces, cut all the dead off of them, and just kind of reset a couple of those. I did pull a couple big pieces out of there, and uh, I planted one in a pot in the back. Sorry if I'm making you dizzy. Okay, over here we got our other little Euphorbia milii. This is a taller growing one with yellow flowers, and it never really flowered this year, but I'm hoping it will. It had one when I got it, which is actually still on here and kind of dried but that's it but it never really flowered pippy don't fall you're sliding baby get off the ramp i gotta fix the rug on this ramp the carpet so that their feet don't slip good girl um here's another aluaudia procera i bought this one this year because the one i had before in the pot over there just it never leafed back out this year i cut the top off and it was still looked healthy but it never leafed out and then this one, which had lost all its leaves, is now starting to leaf out again. I soaked it yesterday. And I think I watered it, uh, like, I don't know, last week sometime. So it's starting, the tips are starting. This, all this tall part, this is all the new growth from this year. So that one's doing good. Hi, dog. Primer spud. What are you guys doing here? You need to go back over that way. Come on, go. Come on, out. Out, right now, go. Don't go that way, go that way. Come on, go. Come on. Go, 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 go. Trip over them all the time. Um, here is a cutting, no. This is an Apuntia Snow Fuzzy, it's called, which is pretty funny. And it was one paddle. And this is the one, if you watched that video where I wasn't sure if I, was, if I planted it upside down. Well, I did, but I messaged and I sent a picture to Planet Desert and they messaged me right back and said, yeah, plant it the other way. It's upside down. And then this is the new growth it got. Now, I don't know why it looks like it's etiolating because it gets pretty much full sun all day right here. And it was in the full sun before. So, you know, I don't know if that's just the way it grows, but interesting. And then this, Trichocereus, it's doing good. I planted this one in the ground. I have my... That is a mangave. That was the tooth fairy. Look at the pup. Ooh, looks good. My lovelies, lots of little pups. Lots of little pups. So this will fill in. And my barrel cactus has got like two new blooms. It looks like three. Oh, yeah, there's another one coming up. It had already flowered this year because it had spent flowers on it. But it's getting three more, so that's exciting. It probably won't produce seeds because there's nothing to pollinate it with. Um, I did get a bunch of seedlings from the seeds that I planted from the cactus down at Waterwise. The guy told me, yeah, go ahead and, you know, grab them. I mean, they literally had hundreds and hundreds of these that were just blooming like crazy and their flower pods were all over the ground, you know, full of seeds. And he's like, yeah, take. So I took two and I probably got 500 seeds. So, but quite a few of them actually germinated and I have little tiny um, Achino cactus grossonii seedlings <laughs> so this is the biggest one i have and i love it and i'm just so hoping it does well over the winter here got another dickia here it's doing really good i'm gonna come around the back side okay yeah no you don't get to come in look at mr bennett wants to come in and harass 
Mr. Wilton here. I know, Wilton. Everybody picks on you. I try to keep him separated in the mornings so that the bigger pigs don't pick on him. He used to be, like, the top hog. And then all of a sudden now he's not. I don't know why. But this little dickia probably produced seeds. Um, I never checked this one, but I'll bet there's seeds in that little flower stalk. But look how cute that one is. My Opuntia. I don't know what this one's called. I grew up calling this Nepalis. I need to cut a few of those pads off because I do not want this thing taken over and uh, trying to grow through the ground, into the ground. So I have my little copper spoons over here, which is doing really good. I'm probably blocking the sun. You can't really see the color. Look at the color on those. Those are amazing. This one had a little mealy bug in it. I treated it. I keep an eye on it. Um, this, I believe, was this Pineapple Express Mangavi. And then this Trichosuria. So this had another flower on it, another big bud. It was just about to open. It never opened, and it fell off. I was very disappointed. So I noticed yesterday it had just fallen off. But nothing, the flower never opened. And I don't think that one opened either. I was watching these last two blooms. But it does have, whoo, hold on, another, well, it looks like an arm coming out of the side. I'm going to stab myself. Um, can you see that? I can't see it. There's a glare on the phone here. But I think it's got another little arm coming out there. And there's something going on here. I don't know if that's a bud. But the new little arm up here is doing really well. So that's growing good. And then my Echinopsis is sending up another flower. Doesn't look like it's going to be as big as the first three flushes of blooms that it's put off. But this thing is a blooming fool. And um, they're just amazing. So it's that flower's sort of pointed towards the south. So, yeah, that's... I think that's pretty much directly south, which is interesting. Hi, Mr. Wilton. What are you doing, buddy? Isn't he the cutest? He looks like a border collie. He's got great big tusks. Hi, baby. Where are you going, Wilton? Where are you going? Good boy. So this here is my third cutting from one of my sago palms in the back. And I'm still waiting. I mean, it looks like it was going to send up a few new leaves. I can see the little cluster in the center, but it still hasn't done it. The other ones did it quite a while ago. And I'll show you those in a second. So here's my other perii. And it's got one, two, and I'm going to go upside down. Woo, hold on. Three pups on there. Super healthy. I love, love, love this plant. The perii is probably my favorite agave. Do I say that all the time about different plants? This is my favorite one. And then go to the next one and go, this is my favorite one. I mean, I can, I have so many favorite ones. <laughs> uh, my little barrel cactus over here. It's doing really good. It does look like it got a little sunburned this year. But this one's been in since early spring, I think I did this wagon. I think I did it in like March. Did I? I'd have to go back and look. Or April. So it was gradually acclimated because it was really cold this spring. It didn't get hot. It, well, it really never got hot this year. We've had a few days over 100, but not a whole lot. My rattlesnake is happy. And then I did start pulling some of these. Oh, there's a weed down by my foot. I did start pulling some of these dead leaves off of here. Um, I left them for quite a while because I think they were protecting these little pups under here, because there's one, two, three, look at the big one over here. I think there's another one in the front. So I left them to protect the those from the sun, but now the sun is, you know, it's, it's starting to really move across the sky towards the south, and, you know, it's not, it's not getting as hot. It's going to be down into the low 80s again in about four days. This is an Agavoides. I planted this, it was like a one big one with a couple little pieces, and it's just huge now. My last Cameronii, this one's still pretty red. Isn't that just amazing? It's got a lot of little pups down in here. I will keep this one trimmed up. Uh, this is my Desert Dragon Mangavi. It's looking good. I really watered these good yesterday. I watered the whole garden good yesterday because I haven't watered in a few weeks. Um, I like to take these dead tips off. Sometimes you have to cut them, but sometimes if you twist them like that, they just break off. Um, 
I got incoming helicopter. So I go back over around this side. I hear a helicopter. I can't see it yet, but it's over there somewhere. Oh, and I did move this and I fixed it all up and straightened all the gravel. This is the, oh, it's a choya of some sort. I grew up calling the staghorn. These were all over the desert in Southern California and Arizona. And I spent a lot of time when I was a kid in the desert and I love the staghorns. They just get absolutely massive. And uh, this one's been growing in a pot for a few years now. And I do need to take, I probably should just chop the top off to about here. And then it'll sense more arms off because I don't want it to get too big and it will get big. Oh, here comes a helicopter. It's gonna go right over the top. Can you see it up there? Let's see if I can see it on. I can't find it on my camera, but it's right there. There it is. Ooh. Climb the trees. There we go. I've never been on a helicopter, but I would love to fly on a helicopter. Okay, back to where we were. So yeah, that's my staghorn cactus, and I did bring it out here because the pigs have knocked it over twice now, and um, I'm gonna find a place for it and I have this pot I did get a chunk of yucca from a friend of ours the other day well the other week and I just <laughs> I just stuck it in a bag of cactus and succulent soil that I haven't used yet and I you know I thought well at least you know it'll start to root if it's in there it won't be just laying there dried and it's actually got a couple big roots on it <laughs> so I, I need to get some holes drilled into this figure out where I want to put it I might just leave it right there. But I, I see from the ground, see how wet the ground is right here? So the sprinklers is hitting this area. So I might have to move these two back because I don't want them getting watered every day, especially this. this I water this about every six months, probably. Oh, you know what? I could put it, like, set it right there and it'll be back far enough. I do walk through there all the time, but I'll have to just trim that rose back and I don't know, we'll figure it out. Um, I did take another cutting, <laughs> same plant. Um, we cut it all down. It was growing in a wine barrel around the pool in the back and it was absolutely massive. We had a huge trailer full of cactus that we took out to the dump and the stump is still in the ground back there. And I noticed it's got a bunch of new growth on it. So we need to pull that out, but I did want to save a couple cuttings from it. And these actually, the original cutting I got when I used to be an exterminator and one of my customers, he had this huge staghorn plant and I hadn't seen one since I was a kid down in the desert we you know we had them all over our property and I asked him for a cutting and he gave me this he gave me a piece probably bigger than that one and that's what I started with and now I've got two huge ones growing in the back and I don't want to give them up my husband hates them because they are just a vicious a vicious plant and they're barbed so if you get one of these little pieces stuck in your skin it's hard to pull them out you almost need pliers but I like them, so I'm not giving up my staghorn. It just reminds me of being a kid out in the desert, riding our horses and motorcycles. So this um, Echeveria, look how beautiful that is now. This thing was looking rough. I wasn't even sure if it was gonna survive. It just looked horrible. This was the one my husband's buddy brought me. He brought me that one and that one. He saw him at the grocery store and he grabbed them for me. And I think they were only like 10 bucks a piece, but I mean, absolutely massive. And then this was the last of my so I had one Sahara there. Oh yeah, there is another pup. See on the front here, way down here. Yeah, this one's doing really good. Um, these all have pups. The Sahara has big pups under there. These have pups, both of these. That one's got one on the other side. But they looked horrible. If you go back to my previous videos when I walked around, I didn't know if they were gonna survive. So I do need to take some of these flower stalks off because I mean, hello, look at that. <laughs> And they do take, that does take a lot of energy from the plant. So I didn't need to do that. So here is one of my other sago palms. And this one it had last year, one, two, three. I think it had four leaves from last year, five leaves. And then two new ones come up this year, quite a while ago. And then this is the other one. And we pulled a, a sago palm out of a wine barrel and planted it in the ground and it had three pups on the side of it. So I cut them off. So this one had one, two, this one had five leaves last year too, finally came up and then it got four new leaves this year. So the other one should be, 
And it was funny because the leaves, it had a few leaves on them, each one, and I potted them up, and then it eventually lost those leaves from, you know, stress or whatever. And then it was just that little crown piece down in there in a pot for, I don't know how long, maybe close to a year. But I knew the plant was still alive because I could see the brown fuzzy, it wasn't drying out. And then finally they just sent up more leaves last year and then this year it got more. So that other one should be doing something. And then the last thing, I just can't get over those echeverias, look at those. Just, they have just taken off, they are so happy now. And uh, hopefully they, well I know the Sahara, it was actually bred to be frost hardy and heat hardy but these ones I don't know about so I'll you know hopefully they'll they'll be rooted enough and established enough and they're kind of tucked up here the flower stalks will be cut off and you know if worse comes to worse and I see they're starting to get a little damaged I can just throw a piece of frost cloth over them because I really want to fill this area in with these great big echeverias I'll probably have to move my little pigs but how cool would that look to fill all this in because they'll just spread Okay, so here is my original agave filifera, and I, the, I did pull, you know, the pups that were in that plastic cereal bowl. They came off of this, and uh, it's I left a couple pups on it, and then it sent this one way over here, which is cool, but it's doing really good. It's about to open up some new leaves, so my wagon, which, yes, I still have not painted, but I will. I will get to that now that it's, now that it's starting to cool off. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll get that done, because can you imagine how pretty that's going to look when it's all nice and colorful and matches the table and chairs <laughs> and I think I think we come to the end of the garden here I don't think there's anything else did I miss anything so now you can see how everything's growing and uh, I started last year in July ripping out gardenias over here in front of this section of um, now I always had plants over in this area because this little patio I've had in here for a long time but so this section had huge big gardenias and it went from get out of here it went from the that that corner wait a minute which one's the that corner it went from that corner to like right over Actually, you know what? It kind of followed this this line here. And there was a little there was bricks there and then this was dirt over here. And so this was full of mint and gardenias. I ripped it all out and I planted this up in August. And then in September, this side came to where you see the water there, came to about there and it came back here. And that was gravel, like the driveway. We just left it. And then this was just dirt. And I had all my pots, cactus pots here. I made like a little cactus garden. But everything was in pots. And it was always getting full of weeds. And so I, I redid this whole section. And I went all the way over. And I did this in August, September. <laughs> right? Yeah. Pulled that stuff out in July. So that got done in August. I did this in September, and it took me a while to do each one because I was doing it by myself. The only help I had was moving some of these big boulders. Everything else I just did by myself, and I did go and buy more bricks and boards to make this shelf because that top shelf up there was the only shelf I had, and it was down low, and it was behind the trees. I always had plants on it, but they didn't get much sun, and that shelf has been there over here. I used to have my carnivorous plants out here, and it, it just now occurs to me that that it's not even centered under the window. I didn't even notice that before. But I like it over here because it was getting, um, you know, it was getting shade fairly early. So I could put some of my m more tender plants over there and they'd get in the shade by around noon so that hot afternoon sun wasn't hitting them. But I guess I wouldn't want to cover up my water spigot down there. Yeah. And then, yeah, so August, September, and then I just started filling these in with pots this area you know there there used to just be you know small pots back in here i used to have two chairs here and i had pots all sitting on those because we never sit out here and then i did this section here along here in november last year and i stopped and i went through november and i stopped right here where that rock is and then this side i did 
in the spring. I did the wagon first and then I did the rest of it sometime in the spring this year. So the garden is just getting to be a year old now. Most of it, not that section, but, and it's really starting to fill in. Okay, well, I think I've babbled long enough. I think I'm over an hour, <laughs> which is pretty funny. So if anybody's still watching, you're amazing. Thank you. Got a couple of green plants. This thing's putting on a lot of new growth. And then over here, I forgot about these. I tucked this under my palm tree and there's a couple begonias in there. Pretty, pretty. Look at the flowers on there. Those are cool. Yeah, so those are tucked in so they get some shade. Yeah, so if you're still on here watching, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, if you hasn't, haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And we will see you next time. Huh, Raider? Mr. Raider? <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.